Now, I don't even guarantee that the arithmetic is correct here. Uh, so you can check out the arithmetic, but we want to see what the sequence of events is. The main thing I'm trying to get across here is what you have to do to reduce a matrix like this, which is totally analogous to what you have to do or what you can do to solve the system of equations. So if this system is written out, this is 2x plus 6y plus z equals 3, 4x plus 18y plus 2z equals 7, and 2x plus 12y plus 3z equals 5. Okay. Now, I've just written out what we get. So, you know, what I do first, I want to get a 1 here. It's much easier to deal with in most cases. So I do the first equation times 1 half. Then I add negative 4 times the first equation to the second. get this. And so far everything is just the same as it'd be if this was just a 2 by 2 or 2 by 3 matrix, okay? Um, now what do I want to do next? We're used to getting a 1 here, a 0 here, a 1 here, a 0 here. Um, and we could do that. There's no reason not to do that, except that it's a little more, well, it, it, it just works out better if we, it just works out more quickly, it's an easier process to follow. We've got a 1 here, why don't we just use it to wipe out that 2 while we're at it, so we'll get a 0 here. We kind of suspect that we want a 0 here if we think about what we're trying to get. Well, we're trying to get the identity. We're trying to get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. It would not have hurt to get the 1 here. But let's go ahead and take care of the whole column before we move to the second column. Okay, that's what I recommend. Okay, so we do what? Negative 2 times the first plus the third. And we get this. Okay. Now we proceed. Um, and we notice, just, just yeah. it's possible that we would have gotten 6, 0 here, isn't it? And if we got 6, 0 here, then when we add a multiple of this row to this one to make this one 0, this one's going to end up 0. Okay, so that could happen. We're not going to deal with that now, but since in one of our examples that is what happened, uh, it's worth noting that it kind of almost happened here, but we had a 2 here instead of 0, so it didn't. Okay, well, whether you understood that or not, what's the next step? We got 1, 0, 0 here. We want to get 1's in our diagonals, so we want to get a 1 here. So we divide this by 6 or multiply it by 6. So we do row 2 times 1 sixth, and this is what we get. <coughs> and then we add negative 6 times this row to this row, and we're going to get a 0 here. And we're going to actually do two steps at once, since we're operating operating on different rows. So um, we hopefully don't get confused. We could also get rid of the 3 here by adding negative 1, no, sorry, negative 3 times this row to this row. So we think of doing that. So we do uh, negative 6 times the second row plus the third and negative 3 times the second row added to the first. Hopefully you can read that. Okay. So let's see, negative 3 times the second row gives us negative 3 here, added to 3 gives us 0. And of course we have 0 here, so negative 3 times that is 0, nothing to add to the 1 half. <coughs> and negative 3 times 1 six is negative 1 half, added to 3 halves leaves us 2 halves, which is 1. Then down here, negative 6 times the second row plus the third, negative 6 times 1 is negative 6, added to 6 gives us 0. Um, negative 6 times 0 is 0, added to 2, we still have 2. 
and negative 6 times 1 sixth is negative 1 added to 2 leaves us 1. So I'm starting to suspect my arithmetic might be correct throughout here, but you know, watch me, I don't, I, I don't guarantee it. Okay, so now <coughs> what do we have? Well, we're starting to develop our identity matrix. Everything's looking good, but we need a 1 down here, don't we? So we take half of the third row. Half of the third row, and it's very clear it's going to give us 1, 1 half. Then uh, we're home almost free. We just add negative half of that third row to the first row, and we're going to have a zero here, and we'll have the whole identity matrix. So it's negative one half of the third plus the first. And of course, negative one half times one half is negative one fourth. Added to one gives us our three fourths. So now we have x equals three fourths, y equals one sixth, z equals one half. If I haven't made an arithmetic mistake, which would be unusual, uh, if we plug these numbers into these equations, we're going to get an identity. <coughs> and we will have done the steps that we could have done on the equation. We could take this first equation times one half. Then we could add negative four times that equation to the second. Then we could add negative two times the first equation to the third equation we got here. And then we could have taken one half of the second equation and negative three times the second plus the first and so forth. Same operations with this notation would end up with this, this, and this.